Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at all of the brand new battle held items introduced in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet through the lens of how it will affect competitive VGC play. Scarlet and Violet introduced several new battle items, some which are incredibly, incredibly relevant and we will likely see right at the start of the brand new VGC format. And so I wanted to briefly just cover each one and give you my first impressions on how I can see them being utilized. So I hope you find this content helpful. Really excited to start kicking off the Scarlet and Violet coverage on this channel as we jump into a brand new generation. And so let me know what else you'd like to see from this channel down in the comment section below. Of course, I focus on very high level competitive VGC content specifically. So yeah, thanks for watching and let's dive into things. Before we dive into each individual item, I just wanted to give an overall summary. In Generation 9, there were several new battle-relevant held items that were released, and I've given my first early impressions for usage in competitive VGC specifically down below. As you can see, I have segmented it into three different buckets. The first one are items that I think will definitely see play, and those are Clear Amulet and Covert Cloak. The second are items that I think have some use cases, but generally won't be super popular. Those are Punching Glove and Mirror Herb. And the third category is items that I think are incredibly situational, and those are Ability Shield and Loaded Dice. Note that Mirror Herb also has utility outside of competitive in just passing down egg moves, and so that is an item that you'll probably want to get. And Covert Cloak and Clear Amulet, which I have listed in the first section, are kind of indirect nerfs to fake out and intimidate, respectively. And given how good both of those have been historically in competitive VGC, it's going to be interesting to see if usage for both of those decreases from past generations. Let's dive into the specifics now. The first item we have to talk about is Clear Amulet. This is a brand new item introduced in Scarlet and Violet, and we did not see it in any of the trailers for the game. Now this item is just a big, big deal for competitive VGC. As you can see, it prevents the holder from having its stats lowered by moves used against it or by other Pokemon's abilities. You know what one of the most common abilities in competitive VGC historically has been? Intimidate. We've seen it on Pokemon like Hitmontop, Incineroar, Landorus Therian, Salamence, Gyarados just to name a couple, and Intimidate has always just been really good in really every format that it's been in, right? And so this in itself is already a direct counter to Intimidate. Players would often use White Herb actually just to counter Intimidate in Sword and Shield, and that's just to stop it one time. Now Clear Amulet allows you to prevent it infinitely, right? And so it's like a White Herb, but it has infinite use. The one thing to note, however, of course, is that it does not prevent self-inflicted stat drops, and so you can't go for it on something like Shell Smash, for example. Uh, the Clear Amulet does not, you know, negate those stat drops. But a lot of self-inflicted stat drop moves aren't really that common in competitive VGC anyway. I think this is just overall one of the best new items, in my opinion. I think also when people see this immediately, you think about how it can be useful in stopping Intimidate, but it is also really valuable uh, against moves such as Parting Shot, Icy Wind, and Snarl. As many of you have probably seen at this point, Grim Snarl in Scarlet and Violet does get access to Parting Shot, and so that already was one of the most dominant Pokemon in Sword and Shield. Now having a priority Parting Shot is a really big deal, right? And so when I'd actually created this initially, I just framed it in terms of physical attackers trying to block Intimidate, but I'm like, okay, now Grim Snarl can Parting Shot priority into a special attacker, right? That's a really big deal in itself as well. And so, yeah, given that I expect that to be really common in the metagame, I think that this naturally is a nice way to kind of counteract that. One interesting debate about using this item, I think, is should I actually use this over in an attack boosting item such as Life Orb or Choice Band or Choice Specs, right? Because those items inherently just give you huge amounts of damage output, and even with the stat drop, you'll still be often doing a lot of damage, and so it's saying, okay, well, I, if I have this item, it's essentially to hedge against stat drops, right? But if I don't have this item, I could be using something like, uh, yeah, I could just be dishing out damage more consistently across the board. So that's one thing to consider. I think with Clear Amulet in particular, it's really interesting if you can use it on a strong attacker that also is kind of setup oriented. I think about something that maybe wants to go for like a Swords Dance or a Dragon Dance, for example, that's already decently powerful. And after one or two boosts, it becomes really, really difficult to stop, right? I think for a lot of setup oriented Pokemon, the whole point in trying to shut them down is, hey, let me just decrease their attacking or special attacking stat back to where it is. So it can actually really snowball the game very quickly. And so if you can combine strong attacker with the setup oriented Pokemon, I think that's where you can get exceptional value from this item. 
But overall, this is just a big item that directly impacts Intimidate as well as Parting Shot, as I mentioned, and all the other stat dropping moves and abilities that you're going to see in competitive play. So I expect this to be used very early on, and I think that you should consider placing this on any strong attacking Pokemon, any setup oriented Pokemon. And like I mentioned with Speed, if Icy Wind and Electroweb and other moves like that become popular, uh, that's the third category that I think you'd really want to give some thought to. But this item is crazy, and I'm really eager to see how players utilize it and how they choose to utilize it over attack boosting items like I mentioned. The next item I want to talk about is Covert Cloak. Now, we had actually seen this item released during a trailer before Scarlet and Violet, but I continue to think that it's going to be a really strong early option, especially if fakeout users become really prevalent in the format, and historically fakeout's always been really good in competitive VGC. So this item essentially prevents the opponent from additional effects of moves affecting you, and so for example, if they use fakeout against you, they'll still deal the damage, but they won't be able to flinch you. In addition, it also mitigates secondary effects from moves such as Icy Wind, Nuzzle, and Snarl, as well as just random status conditions or things like Rock Slide flinches, for example. So there's a ton of utility for this outside of just purely fake out flinch, but naturally when people saw this, you gravitate towards thinking, okay, how can I use this in VGC? And preventing fake out in itself is already a really big deal. You think about Series 12 and just Sword and Shield VGC in general, there were a ton of Pokemon that really would value having this item. For example, Whimsicott to just immediately set up a Tailwind, or a Trick Room user like Hatterene that can just set up Trick Room without having to worry about Fake Out on turn 1. This essentially gives you some more wiggle room to get the speed control that you're looking for often, and so naturally I think that this is going to be super good on Pokemon with access to speed control, whether it be Tailwind or Trick Room. I also think that this can be really good on Pokemon that just want to attack immediately, right? Like something that can deal massive amounts of damage and doesn't necessarily need a boosting item to you know, further increase its damage and can already just spread a lot of damage. Kyogre likely won't be legal in competitive EGC for many years during Scarlet and Violet, but that's an example, right? Where it's like, okay, Covert Cloak Kyogre it prevents you from clicking Fake Out onto it, and if you have speed control next to it, right, uh, then you can immediately just like launch a water spell without risk of flinching on turn one. That's one use case. Uh, I think also this can be really good on Pokemon that can support partners, and so an example is like after you Lilligant with Torkoal, when you face off Lilligant and Torkoal, right, like both are threatening, and so if you want to maybe click Fake Out on Lilligant to prevent like a Sleep Powder or an after you, well then this can ignore that Fake Out and immediately support the Torkoal. And finally, I think this can also be really good on Prankster Pokemon, just to prevent them from getting flinched on turn 1. That was a pretty common interaction where in Sword and Shield, one way people would deal with uh, Grimmsnarl, for example, is click Fake Out and then hit it with the super effective attack, right? And so this can give you the ability to ignore that and then get whatever move you want off with that Prankster Pokemon. So, like I mentioned, I think it's incredibly useful in preventing Fake Out Flinch. It also can be used to mitigate annoying secondary effects, and that in itself is fairly big, I think. Yeah, think about the use cases outside of just Fake Out. Um, but yeah, I am interested because if fake out is not nearly as common in other formats, maybe this use, uh, loses a little bit of viability. I think like by just introducing the item now, players are probably a little bit more hesitant in even, you know, feeling safe and having fake out or clicking fake out all the time. I think it still will be prevalent in the metagame, maybe not as much as previous years, uh, but this essentially just gives you a feel safe against fake out, right? So yeah, I think this item is super good as well. So the previous two items I think will be used quite a good amount, and I think they are really game-changing items in many ways and can dramatically impact how the format shapes up. The next couple of items here are items that can be relevant, but I don't think will be used nearly as commonly because they are, you know, fairly tailored towards specific Pokemon. So this item is the Punching Glove, which boosts the power of the holder's punching moves by 50%, and it also prevents direct contact with targets. Now, this is a pretty interesting item, right? 50% is a major, major significant boost, and it's significant enough to warrant usage over items such as Life Orb or Choice Ban. When I saw this item, I initially thought, okay, if it's only giving you like a 20-30% boost, would you really want to use it? Uh, but 50% is quite a big deal. So I can kind of see two main early use cases, right? You can run it on Pokemon that run entirely or almost entirely punch moves. Naturally, that just boosts your damage output significantly at really no drawback, right? Uh, the downside of using items like Life Orb or Choice Band is that you do get punished for it slightly, Life Orb with the recoil, and of course you also deal less damage uh, relative to the punching glove if you're using the punching moves. And then Choice Band, of course, locks you into a move. And so with Pokemon that run almost entirely punch moves, right, Pokemon that maybe run a mix of like Ice Punch, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, for example, example, uh, often these are fighting type Pokemon of course, then this I think item has a ton of value. 
I also think this could be an interesting item to just use on Pokemon that have punch moves, but not necessarily like primarily, you know, punching Pokemon. And you can use it on a Pokemon that maybe wants to get a surprise boost just to a single punch move to deal massive amounts of damage and or pick up surprise one hit knockouts, right? So that becomes a little bit more situation on now, but let's say you, you're going up a common against the common meta threat. You've got a Pokemon that gets access to a punching move that without the 50% boost can't KO that threat, but with the boost can immediately KO it. I think there are some niche cases where then you might want to consider using this. And so, yeah, I think it's a fun item overall. And so I, you know, like I said, I don't expect this to be super common because obviously there aren't that many Pokemon like get access to punching moves that I think are really that strong. But whatever punching move Pokemon exist in the format, you certainly will want to consider this as an offensive option. The next item to talk about here is Mirror Herb. This is a pretty interesting item that we had also seen released in a trailer before Scarlet and Violet. And as you can see by the text, it essentially allows you to mirror an opponent's stat increase to boost its own stat, but only by once. I don't think there's really too much early value use for this item in my opinion, because I think this is a anti-meta and a matchup oriented item. And what I mean by that is, in the first few weeks of Scarlet and Violet, we're not really going to know what's going to be super good or super strong, and as a result, are you really going to just add this item to your team if you can't even guarantee it going off? I'm not sure it's super worth it. And so, yeah, I think this item in general is just too situational for generic use in competitive VGC, but I do think that there are some very valuable niche use cases. Especially if the most dominant Pokemon end up being common setup attackers, such as Swords Dance or Dragon Dance, right? Or they have those attacks, I should say. Uh, and so, yeah, let's say, like, after a few weeks, the meta shapes up and turns out that the top Pokemon do often like to use setup-oriented attacks. Then I think this item becomes a lot more viable because it's interesting, right? Let's say you can use it to essentially copy your opponent's boost. I think that can be particularly valuable in terms of looking at speed in particular, which is kind of what I'm trying to get at at this last bullet point. And so the idea is that often with these setup-oriented Pokemon, they set up on you and then they kind of just outspeed and KO everything. Think about Geomancy Xerneas in particular, right? Well, where this item becomes interesting is putting it on something that maybe outspeeds that Pokemon and can counter it. So it's saying, okay, you set up, you get your speed boost, your attack boost or whatever, but I'm going to copy those same boosts and I'm just going to be able to outspeed you and KO you. And now you have to face down my threat, which suddenly has all of these boosts. So I think this item will probably be a little bit more relevant in the restricted formats. I talked about Xerneas, but yeah, Geomancy Xerneas, I feel like this item directly would have been a really interesting response to that. Uh, Geomancy Xerneas, of course, dominated VGC many, many years ago, way back in 2016, and had been, you know, fairly prevalent in other formats as well. But overall, yeah, I think Mirror Herb in the first couple of days or opening weeks of Scarlet and Violet, I don't really think there's much need for this. It also is interesting because you can use it on Pokemon that, you know, for example, if you have an Intimidator and you're activating a Defiant user, right, then you can copy their boost potentially, uh, and so that's interesting, but once again, I think that's a fairly niche use case, uh, and so overall, like, I wouldn't put this on a Pokemon early on, I would probably wait for the meta to settle a little bit and see where things shake up, but yeah, this can be used interesting enough to, like, directly counter setup-oriented Pokemon, and if those become popular, then I think there's more use for it. So we're now diving into the items that I think just don't really have that much viability in competitive VGC. You might see it in very, very unique scenarios, but overall, these are just not items I expect to see being used very much, or really at all, to be honest. The first one is Loaded Dice, and we had actually seen this before in a trailer for Scarlet and Violet. And the idea is that it will guarantee that you'll hit more frequently with your multi-strike moves, right? So you think about something like Bullet Seed or Icicle Spear, for example. Uh, per a post on Smogon, actually, the way it works is for multi-hit moves, especially those like 2 to 5, for example, which is the majority of them, a loaded dice essentially looks at the initial roll. So let's say you roll 4 or 5 immediately, then it doesn't change anything. But if you roll a 2 or a 3, which is more likely, then it essentially re-rolls the move to a 4 or a 5 in terms of number of hits. And so it's one of those where it's like, okay, if you're using Pokemon that you like to use multi-strike hits, then this can be viable. Uh, but to be honest, one, multi-strike moves in general in VGC, at least ones where you're rolling for different hits potentially, uh, just aren't that common. There are some multi-hit moves in VGC, obviously, like Surging Strikes from Urshifu, but those hit a guaranteed number of times, right? So something like this doesn't affect that. I think I'd personally only really use this if a Pokemon I'm using it on needed to guarantee a KO that it otherwise wouldn't get. So for example, let's say we're using Breloom, there's something in the metagame where if Bullet Seed hits four or five times, it guarantees the KO, and if it doesn't, uh, you know, if it only hits two or three times and it doesn't get the KO, then that's like a, you know, potential niche scenario where I think it's worth considering. But overall, I just think one, yeah, with the lack of that many strong Pokemon with Motai Strike moves, uh, and two, with you, like, 
giving up another item to use this i don't think it's really that great but i do think it's kind of fun right and once again like you shouldn't ever discount an item entirely uh and so if you are using any pokemon with multi-strike moves you should ask yourself hey should i use this is there any viability for it the one other thing I'd say here is that it has some unique interactions with accuracy check moves, and I'll actually link a post to Smogon down in the description below if you want to read about it. But from my understanding and interpretation, it just seems like this is worse than Wide Lens, right? Where, uh, from my understanding, for example, if Serena uses Triple Axle with this, then 90% of the time, like, it, it rolls for the first time, and if you hit, then it guarantees you three hits. Whereas Wide Lens is three individual calculations, but your accuracy is just so high with each individual calculation, right? And so, that's my understanding. I may be interpreting it incorrectly, so if so, please let me know in the comment section below. But generally, I just don't think this item is super good in BGC, because, yeah, the lack of multi-strike moves, and even then, you're giving up an item to use. Use it. To conclude this section, one of the final items to talk about is Ability Shield. Now, when I saw this, I honestly was just like, okay, it's cool, but what do you actually use it for? I'm sure there's some really creative use cases for this, and honestly, I would really love to hear from you guys on, yeah, how you think this can be viable in competitive EGC. In my opinion, I just wouldn't use this item early. It's similar to some of the other items we talked about, I think I'd only use it if ability changing became super meta relevant. And yeah, I think in order for this item to really see play, ability changing moves or abilities really need to be used. Now what's interesting is if you look at VGC historically, for example, skill swap actually has seen some occasional play. It was actually really relevant in 2016 where you'd want to skill swap onto Primal Kyogre or Groudon from something like a Bronzong or a Cresselia, essentially resetting your weather. So let's say skill swap came back and was more prevalent, then I think this item would be a little bit more relevant. There is also actually a new Pokemon that changes the opponent's ability of hit by a contact move. Uh, I don't really think this Pokemon will be used very much, so I don't expect this item to be relevant in order to counter that. So yeah, I don't know. I just I don't think there are really too many use cases for this, and often whatever is holding an item like this probably values having another item. Um, but as always, I think there are niche use cases with really anything in Pokemon, so I'm curious what you think this could be used for. I really don't have too many examples for high-level VGC play, at least specifically. There's one final item to talk about, but it does include some minor spoilers regarding the game, and so, yeah, if you don't want to get spoiled at all regarding Scarlet and Violet, I would recommend you click out of the video right now, but yeah, this is an item that I felt like warranted discussion because it is the final battle item, so yeah, if you have watched this far and you don't want to get spoiled anymore, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. The final item to talk about here is Booster Energy. Now, this is an item that is specific towards a new category of Pokemon called Paradox Pokemon. It essentially operates similarly to Zacian and Zamazenta's signature items, which essentially give you a boost when you bring the Pokemon in. So, the booster energy will boost the highest stat of said P Paradox Pokemon, and yeah, Paradox Pokemon all either have the ability Protosynthesis or Cork Drive. Now, note that Protosynthesis and Cork Drive can actually activate under Sun and Electric Terrain, respectively, and so you don't necessarily need booster energy to get that activation, right? It's actually possible to stack the abilities on top of an actual item if you have ways to enable the sun or electric terrain. But naturally, I think that if you're using a Paradox Pokemon, this is just, just easily the first item you should consider on them because getting a free stat boost is just incredibly, incredibly powerful. And if you played Sword and Shield at all and played in the Zacian metagame, you'll know just how good that was. And so, yeah. If slash when Paradox Pokemon are allowed, you should just consider this item first. I do think one of the interesting questions are if multiple Paradox Pokemon are allowed, how are you going to decide which one to allocate this item to, right? Because obviously there will be item claws, and so you can't guarantee, yeah, only one Pokemon can run booster energy. But overall, I think this item is obviously really powerful and is very, very specific to a small set of Pokemon. But for that small set, which are going to be super relevant if they're allowed in VGC, then obviously this would just dramatically increase their damage output. So, yeah. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video, so I hope you found it helpful. Thank you so much, as always, for watching, and let me know what other content you'd like to see me make regarding competitive stuff in Scarlet and Violet before we dive into competitive battles. My name is Aaron Cybertron Zhang. Leave a like if you enjoy, and I'll see you all next time. Alright, peace.